Let's continue to look at the string class, and we're going to do that through the method substring. But before we do that, I want to take a look at strings in general. Strings can be divided into their individual characters, and let's see a visualization of that. It would look something like this. Barefoot, which is the string word, is divided into its individual characters. And we can access these characters through something called its index. Every character has an index associated with it. So the A is at 1, the E is at 3, the F is at 4, so on and so forth. If I wanted to have a visual representation in the code, it's optional, but it's going to be helpful for us in this program. I would simply comment out the numbers and put them beneath the string that I'm working with. So you can see how 0 through 7 is going to be a helpful reference in accessing different parts of the string word. Now when I have a string, it's important to remember that the index always starts at 0, not 1. So if I was looking for the capital B, I would be looking for index 0, not 1, which would give me lowercase a. Now that we understand that, we can move forward with the method substring. And what the method substring does is it returns a string that is part of the original string. So if I have the word barefoot, I can find parts or substrings of the original word. And the first one that we're going to look for is the word bear. But before I show you the code to do that, I want to add one note. And that note is, notice that the string in substring is lowercase. Most methods are camel case, so the next word is capitalized. But in the case of substring, the S is not capitalized, so it's all lowercase substring. So the way the method works is the first argument is the starting index, and the last argument is the ending index. So I'm going to go from 0 to 3, and hopefully that'll print bare. And then I'm going to print it out down here, and let's see what this prints out. It says the sub of barefoot, 0, 3, is bar. Now wait a second. I didn't want bar. I wanted bear. And the problem comes in with the last argument is exclusive. And what that means is that it's not included when you're trying to find a substring of the word. So the correct implementation of looking for bear would look something like this. And I called it sub 2. So instead of 0 to 3, I did 0 to 4. So now, when we run this, we would get the sub of barefoot 04 is bare. And we get the correct part of the word that we're looking for, or the correct substring. And I've added a note in there to indicate what we've just done. The ending index must always be one more than the substring's ending. And so if we're looking for bare, which looks like it would end at 3, we would put in 4. Let's change it up a little bit and say, instead of looking for bear, I want to look for foot. So I've called it sub3. I've used the same print line statement. And let's see what goes in here. Hopefully you realize that I'm going to start at 4, and I need to go one more than the last one, and I would get 8. So when I run the program, I would say the sub of barefoot for 8 is foot. And that is exactly what I'm looking for, the foot out of barefoot. You can see that I've changed it up a bit. Instead of saying 4, 8, I've only added one parameter with 4. And let's see what that prints out. Well, it prints out the same thing. Well, how does that work? I still get foot without having a second parameter. Maybe you can guess what it's doing, but I'll tell you. If there is no second argument, it will go to the end of the string. So if I started at 2, it would give me re foot. Or if I started at 5, it would give me OOT. And when you have a method that has two implementations, which we do here, one with two parameters and one with one parameter, we call it overloaded. It has the same name, but it is implemented differently. This one has a starting and ending index. This one assumes that the ending index is the end of the string. Now, what if I wanted to just find one letter, like the B in barefoot? I would look at 0, 1. Never put 0, 0, because remember, this one always has to be one more. If I said 0, 0 or 2, 2, it would print out nothing. So when I run this, I get the sub of barefoot 0, 1 is B. Let's say that I wanted to look for the F in barefoot. You could probably guess what the code's going to be. It's going to be 4, 5, and that, sure enough, is going to give me F. Now I can accomplish the same thing with word.charat4. But remember, 
Charette returns a character and substring returns a string. And there are different rules to handling strings versus handling characters. Yes, they're going to look exactly the same, but they are not going to be the same data type. One's going to be a string, one's going to be a character. Let's have a little bit of fun with it and find the word R in barefoot. And then I've given you a little bit extra of a challenge, and that is finding roof out of barefoot. You can pause the video and see if you can figure out what numbers go inside of the parentheses of the substring to get those two words, first R and then roof. All right, let's look at R. Hopefully you realized it was starting at 1, where the A is, and ending at F. Remember, 4 is exclusive, so it would just read 1 to 3, which is the word R. And so we would get barefoot contains the word R. Now roof is a little bit harder. You would get 2, 3, that would give you the R. You would get 5 through 7, which would give you the two O's. And then you would do 4, 5 to get the F. And that would give us barefoot contains the word roof. Let's go ahead and summarize the method. Its name is substring. The data type in are two ints. It returns a string and its sequence is the starting index and the ending index, which is exclusive. And the quantity is two. Now I have a second line here because remember it's overloaded and the overloaded method would look like this. The name would still be substring but this one only takes in one argument. Its data returned is string. It doesn't have a sequence because it only has one value and its quantity is only one. I have a few more examples that I want to show you with the method substring. Let's see what happens if I'm using barefoot and I start at zero and go to eight. That would give me the entire word barefoot. Next, what if I said zero to 30? Hopefully you can see there's a problem with this in that there is no 30th index. And this would produce an error. It wouldn't give you a compile error, but a runtime error, because it would happen when you run the program, because 30 is definitely out of the range of 0 to 7. And then finally, what if I tried to find something before the word started, negative 5 to negative 1? Well, that too would give me a runtime error saying index out of bounds, because you can't have a negative index. Summing it up, strings hold groupings of characters, and they're divided into something called indexes. Substring returns a string that is part of the original string. The second argument of substring is exclusive, so meaning it's not going to be included. So if I want the letters 0 through 4, I would have to put 0, 5 in order to get that substring. If the substring method does not have a second argument, it just assumes that it's going to go to the end of the string. And that second substring method is overloaded because it has the same name as substring, but it has a different implementation. Finally, if an argument is invalid, like the index is not inside of that particular string, you're going to get a runtime error that's going to say index out of bounds. Substring can be a powerful tool inside of the string class. Used properly, it will allow you to find any part of a string that you're trying to examine. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please do like below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Truly, thanks again for watching.